good evening. Uh, one of the uh, uh, constant attacks on Gail Wickenberg's and uh, Working Wage Bible versions is the idea that somehow she was unfair to Edwin Palmer, uh, who was a uh, editor of the uh, NIV. And I'm going to read here from uh, a work that was put out by Albert uh, McKinney. And this is, uh, he's on Labian 312. And he kind of, he puts out the uh, view that uh, Gippinger was misquoting, misciting uh, uh, Palmer. And he says, he one barely turns a page when the introduction to N NIBV, when we are greeted by the following quote from NIV chief editor Edwin H. Palmer. Few clear and decisive texts that declare Jesus is God. This is a rather strange quote. Well, it's not a strange, strange quote. He's point, she's pointing out that the NIV uh, editors, uh, translators believe that there are few clear, decisive texts that declare Jesus is God, when in fact there are many uh, texts that, uh, verses that declare Jesus is God. Uh, in fact, it was not even grammatically correct sentence. It was meant to be. It's a quote. It does, however, give the impression Palmer is skeptical, skeptical about the divinity of Jesus. Uh, I wouldn't get that impression at all. The issue was the text of the NIV and what they were doing to verses, not about what Palmer personally believed. This is further emphasized by a claim of the NIV heresy. Yeah, they were taking out clear verses of, of, on the uh, de de deity of Christ. And presumably Palmer as well. Yeah, Palmer believed that there were few and, cl and clear verses that declared the deity of Christ. He didn't say that Palmer didn't believe in the deity of Christ, but he believed in there were few clear verses that say, stated that. But is Ripplinger accurate in her portrayal of this quote? She is, if you can read English. In actuality, Palmer is, quote, is pointing out the King James Version of John 118 relied upon inferior manuscripts that cloud the clear assertion of Jesus' divinity. Uh, that's irrelevant to the point that back he believes there are few and clear decisive te uh, texts that declare Jesus is God. Uh, the reality is, is that the, uh, the assertion uh, that uh, the, the claim uh, of inferior manuscripts is an insertion, not a proof. He has to prove the inferior manuscripts. This is, this, this, is the, this is the Alexandrian mindset, that they've already proven something that they need to yet prove. It's an assertion. Uh, uh, this is called begging the question. He notes that there are only a few verses that explicitly assert the divinity of Jesus, and this is one of those cases, and that's what Whitman was pointing out, that uh, there are many verses that declare Jesus is God, not just a few. However, the King James Version rendering, based upon later inferior manuscripts, weakened this assertion in comparison to the clarity presented in, pre, present in modern translations such as the NIV. Uh, no, it doesn't. Not, uh, not one bit. <clears throat> the fact is, is that the NIV uh, has to uh, add to the uh, reading uh, and creates a reading that is found in, in, not, in any Greek text. They add both God and Son to the reading. And so they basically saying son is not in the, in the text, but they add son to it. Uh, let's see. However, the King James Version rendering are based, based upon later inferior manuscripts. They're later manuscripts, but not inferior. That's what they've got to prove. Uh, Weaken this assertion in comparison to the clarity pre uh, present in modern translations such as the NIV. The NIV doesn't make anything clear and, and rejects uh, uh, its own Greek text, the uh, critical text. So the reading is either God or Son. It can't be both. And that's what the NIV tries to do. It tries to put both in there. Thus, rather than denying the divinity of Christ as Jesus, as one might infer from Whippinger's misleading quote, misleading quote, nothing misleading about it. If you read English, you'd understand exactly what she was saying. This is a red herring. Palm was defending it. Well, what he was defending was the fact that there are few decisive uh, texts that state that Jesus is God. He might be defending uh, John 1.18 as being uh, one of those, but the uh, the fact is the, the reading that he is going to defend is the, is the NIV is not found in any Greek text. The degree of manipulation present is made clear by the comp comparing Rippinger's cited quote, quote unquote, with the full sentence. Now, what the Albert gives here isn't the, he gives a full sentence and he gives an additional sentence. So what he gives is a paragraph. He's not just stopping with the sentence. The sentence stops here. Uh, John 1.18, as inspired by the Holy Spirit, is one of those, okay? And then she goes on with the quote, few clear and decisive texts that declare Jesus is God, period. That's the sentence, okay? This, what what uh, Albert now continues on here is, but without forth of its own, the King James Version following inferior manuscripts, author what the Holy Spirit said, 
through John calling Jesus son. Okay, so what uh, uh, what Albany adds on is not the sentence. He adds on uh, what the paragraph says. And so what uh, Whitlinger quoted was totally correct. She quoted part of the sentence. Please note, Whitlinger isolated the phrase in bold and treated it as, as a sentence to make a point. She quoted uh, apart from, uh, a part of a sentence. She quoted from part of a sentence. And uh, what uh, Albert gave you was a paragraph. In context, the meaning is completely different. No, it's not. All, uh, all uh, that uh, uh, Palmer is saying is that uh, the reason that uh, John, the, uh, the NIV reading is different than the King James Version is that the, uh, uh, based on his view, that there are, uh, uh, the King James Version used uh, late, there, and late and therefore inferior manuscripts. That's an assertion. That's not a fact. Uh, please note, Whiplinger isolated phrase in bold and treated it as, as a sentence to make her point. She, she quoted from a sentence. She uh, uh, a, it was a quotation from a sentence. And that's exactly what the, uh, the sentence that she quoted from was saying, that there were few and decisive uh, Greek te texts that declare Jesus as God. That is the sentence. Uh, such blatant manipulation of the evidence could not be accidental. Now, the fact is, is that uh, she was absolutely correct in what she said, and I'm going to read here something from uh, Palmer to show that uh, uh, he had, he knew what he was talking about. And uh, uh, let me read here. Let me see here. Uh, uh, Palmer was written, Palmer was born in 1922 and died in 1980. Somewhere along the line, 19, between uh, when he was saved and 1980, the King James Bible, according to him, became a fossil. I love the King James Version. This is Palmer writing now. And this is his chapter 14 on the, isn't the King James Version good enough? The King James Version and NIV compared. I love the King James Version. I was con converted under it. My first memory verses were taken from it, and I've been blessed by it. So he's blessed by it. Back in 19, let's see, you know, 22, 32, 42, 42, let's say, around there. And uh, since uh, 42, uh, 1980, uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, we can't use it anymore. And God still uses the King James Version to bring many people to salvation in Christ. Okay, they can't read it, though. They can't understand it now. This version was translated by godly men who did an excellent job with the tools they had in the language for four centuries ago. He knew it back in 1922, 32, 42. But now we can't understand it uh, in the 21st century. Countless millions have been converted, sanctified, and nurtured through it. Thank God for that marvelously used translation. Amen. The King James Version is not, however, the best translation to use today. This is so for two reasons. One, it adds to the word of God. Two, it is now obscure and lead, misleading renderings of God's word. Now, I'm going to read here from uh, page where he talks about 143, so we're finger. Uh, was quoting from, and I'll read the whole, the whole area where he's drawn 118. A striking case in where the, of where the King James, King James Version following bad Greek copies of the original text, again, that's an assertion without a proof, changed the original is, uh, changed the original is John 118. The King James Version says, no man hath seen God at any time, the only begotten Son, and that's where the difference is, is between Son and God, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. John 118, as inspired by the Holy Spirit, is one of those few clear and decisive texts that declare Jesus is God, period. So when Whitman was quoting, she, she, she quoted from that sentence, and she was correct in taking out that sentence, few and clear and decisive texts that declare Jesus is God, because that was their view. The NIV view was that there are few clear and decisive texts that declare Jesus is God, when in fact there are many. But without fault of its own, the King James Version following inferior manuscripts, again, a loaded term, Offered what the Holy Spirit said through John, calling Jesus Son. Now, supposedly, what he says is that Son shouldn't be there. And yet the NIV does have the word Son in there. Using the archaic language of the King James Version, the verse should read, No man hath, hath seen God at any time. The only begotten God, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. Now, if you look at the uh, NIV, the New American Standard, probably it reads just like that. That's how the New American Standard reads. I guess they would take that hat. No man has seen uh, no man has seen God at any time. The only begotten God, which is in the bosom of the Father, He has de uh, declared and will explain to him, explain God. Uh, so the uh, uh, he's basically saying what the New Market Standard rendering would be archaic. Um, but the problem, of course, with New Market Standard rendering is you have a begotten God, and that's why Athanasius, the defender of the Trinity, rejected that word God, rejected the word God, 
and uh, he said to worship his son. Uh, now he's going to say he uh, ought to say in a mind in an elegant way, no man has ever seen God but God, the one and only son. Where does he get son from? It's either God or son, but God, the one and only son, who he is at the Father's side has made him known. So what the NIV done, has done is made up an entire phrase, uh, a verse out of thin air and have added both the word God and Son in there. And of course, uh, God, the, uh, the one and only Son, uh, uh, Jesus Christ is not the only Son because uh, God has made many sons. So both readings in the NIV and the American Standard are wrong, you know, just by the fact of other scriptures show you that. Who is at the Father's side has made him known. Now, let's see what he goes on here to say, uh, uh, declared by this, he has a footnote here, and uh, let's see here, on chapter 14, he says here, footnoting, for practical purposes, there is virtually universal agreement that the Greek text underlying the King James is inferior. Although today a small handful of Bible scholars hold that this text is to be preferred, most most such scholars reject it. See, that's begging the question, and that's just an, an appeal to numbers. That has nothing to do with the fact. Uh, he has to prove that uh, inferior, these later manuscripts are inferior. That's an assertion. That's James White does the same thing. James White does the exact same thing, and then go on like uh, they really, they, it's a given fact. When it's not a fact, I'll be doing a video later, uh, sometime later, uh, in a week, uh, talking about the later manuscripts and from the uh, from the majority text viewpoint. So this is it's just an argument by numbers, not an argument by fact. And he goes on to, in some of the schools, he, he, he uh, notes he is Princeton, Harvard, and Yale. That's some good company. Uh, then he goes on here uh, about the misreading renderings of the King James Bible, page 144. Many examples of erroneous translations given below were not errors in 1611 when the, the King James Version was published. But there are definitely errors today in view of the current meanings of those words. Okay, so he's saying that, and we're going to see in a second, right off the bat, where he's uh, proven wrong. Other King James Version errors are due to the translator's lack of knowledge in the 17th century. Here are some examples of the misleading or obscure readings of the King James Version. Genesis 2.4. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth. The Hebrew term for generations is an important one in Genesis. And it occurs ten times to mark ten times to mark new sections. Uh, it is repeated in Genesis 2.36.9 for emphasis. A preferable uh, translation would be: This is the account of the heavens and the earth. Well, if you go to ESV, the ESV, the modern ESV, uh, you'll find the uh, word generations is there. They translate it. Um, pull that up. Uh, these are the generations of the heavens and earth when they were created. And uh, the ESV came out in uh, 2001, and I'm assuming this is the Bible looks like the 2011 edition here. So they, they got the nonsense. They got the idea of the obscure terms, and, and I'll go through some other things later on to show you the nonsense. Edward Palmer was a heretic. It's pure, pure and simple. He was a five-point limited atonement, conditional, uh, conditional election, a, a heretic. And uh, this is the guy you want translating your, your Bible. He didn't believe, you know, you, you grew up in the King James, and uh, he's going to tell you what's obscure and what you can't read, and you can't, you can't understand it. But again, Ripplinger was absolutely correct in her, uh, in her quote on um, Palmer. She didn't take anything out of context. She, was make, she wasn't inferring or saying that Palmer did not believe in the deity of Jesus Christ. But the fact was that the uh, modern versions do remove key verses, that prove that Jesus Christ is God. And the NIV, uh, he's claiming the King James Version adds to the Word of God because he's saying that the, uh, based on this, you know, the Westcott and what conflated theory nonsense, uh, he's, in fact, the NIV um, adds both God and Son. And there's no Greek text in existence that has both in there. So he just made up a verse. The NIV in John 1.18 doesn't even exist in any Greek text. So he's saying the Holy Spirit inspired they didn't inspire uh, that, uh, any Greek text he used. They didn't inspire the critical text, critical text or the, uh, the text of Hesepsis because neither text reads like the NIV. Uh, they clearly just made it up because they knew it had a problem. But of course, uh, you say, if you say one and only God, and one and only Son, that's an error because God has many sons now. And if you say only begotten God, then you've got an error. 
uh, you got a heresy because uh, that's an alien heresy. Then you got a begotten God. A begotten God is a lesser God. Pure and simple. Athanasius uh, opposed the word God, and he, 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 he said Son was the correct reading. And so uh, no one's, uh, the King, King James Bible is not, uh, you're not losing anything with the King James Bible. In John 1.18, you get the correct reading in John 1.18 from the correct manuscripts. And uh, the fact is, is that uh, their assertion that these inferior manuscripts will be uh, actually an incorrect reasoning on their part uh, by assuming that uh, earlier is better. Not necessarily. Depends, depends if it's the, uh, the earlier reading. Uh, it comes from a better source and is an actual better, uh, from a better uh, manuscript tradition, uh, which, which the Alexandrian text is not. So again, Ripplinger is uh, correct. She did not misquote Edwin Palmer. And uh, the reality is, is that the NIV uh, is a corrupt uh, version. And uh, Edwin Palmer, you know, Edwin Palmer, if the King James Bible is good enough for Edwin Palmer, it's good enough for me. Amen. Thank you.